Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You can all hear me, good. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. I know that you have a, a lot of things to do on a Thursday evening, so I can't tell you how much this means to us. Uh, we look forward to this educational conference every year. It is our signature event, so we really appreciate you making the time. There are many people to thank, um, and before I bring Dr. Schoen, our moderator, on stage, I'd just like to say a couple of words of thanks. First of all, to Fairleigh Dickinson University for this magnificent venue, um, and so we, we really appreciate it. Uh, the, the university has been very kind to us, and Mark is teaching the estate planning in the CFP program uh, starting March 11th, if any of you would like to sign up. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Simon Arata from Fidelity Investments. I'd like to thank Greg Couric from BlackRock, um, who have graciously agreed to be here. These are two awesome, ex excellent speakers, and um, they're on the road quite a bit. Uh, Simon, like, literally just uh, stepped out of a meeting uh, to come here. So we are really thrilled and want to thank you both for, for being here. I'd also like to thank a few of our sponsors, again, who make this event possible, uh, Fidelity Investments, Putnam, um, Mainstay, Fairleigh Dickinson, BlackRock, and TD Ameritrade. If there's anything that we can do to help you enjoy the event a little bit more, please let us know. Uh, everyone from Beacon is wearing a name tag. We all have a, a silver badge, so please, if there's anything that we can do, uh, let us know. And we do invite you to take home goodie bags. I did bring Ziploc bags and uh, aluminum foils, so you're welcome to just make a plate and bring it home to your spouse or loved one or your family. So again, thank you. I'm gonna bring out Dr. Stone, our moderator. Dr. Sohn, who many of you obviously know, Dr. Sohn is um, um, a managing director for Beacon Wealth Management. Prior to joining Beacon, Dr. Sohn ran Somer Somerset Surgical Associates for nearly 40 years. Dr. Sohn also, together with his late wife Judith, co-founded the Iris Sohn Investment Research Conference. If you don't know about that conference, I suggest that you Google it and you look at it because it's an awesome, awesome event. If you have the luxury of attending too, uh, it, it's definitely uh, worth the price tag. Dr. Sohn graduated magna cum laude from Phi Beta Kappa with honors from City College of New York and graduated from New York University School of Medicine. He earned his MBA from this prestigious university, from this program, and he also is Series 65 registered. So I'd like to bring him up here, and again, thank you all for your attendance this evening. Thank you, Tina. I'd also like to welcome everybody here this evening. Today we highlight the recent changes in the tax system. More are likely to be formulated, and as investors, we have to learn to function to maximize our returns and minimize, wherever possible, the negative effects of these tax changes. The first speaker is Mark Germain. Mark is CEO of Beacon Wealth Management. He provides financial planning and investment portfolio management services and manages approximately $260 million in assets. Mark's formal education was in finance and statistics. He has a BA in economics and accounting from Southern Connecticut State University and an MBA in finance from Northeastern University. He started his career in Boston with Touche Ross. He created original software to formulate and evaluate new health-related bond issues. This background has enabled him to be at the forefront of technological advances in finance. He taught accounting and finance at Northeastern University. For many years, he has devoted his time to financial planning and diversified asset management. He is on the adjunct faculty here at Fairleigh Dickinson University, where he teaches in the certified financial planning course. This is where I first met Mark in 2004 when I was one of his students. Mark will discuss strategies for dealing with the current tax situation. Mark. Thanks, uh, are we on? 
How's that? Can you hear me? Great. Uh, I do want to thank everyone, just as, as uh, Norman and Tina have. Uh, I, don't th I would like to thank all of the sponsors who Tina's named. Uh, we're going to get right into the presentation. We're probably a couple minutes behind, but we will catch up. Um, and I will try not to talk too fast, although all of you who know me know on occasion I do have a tendency to talk a little bit quick. So tonight we are going to talk first about what some of the tax law changes are. We're going to zip through what they are. We're not going to spend too much time on the impact on you, but we are going to talk about there's 13 of them in 2000 and for 2013, kind of ironic. We are um, going to go through a number of topics, but the first thing I want to do before we get into the actual topics is for you to take a look at what's happened to the average tax rate on us since 1945. Take a look at the top spike, and from 1945 till now, if those of us who love calculus will know that we're on a downward sloping line. And that has continually progressed downward since 1945. What's really more interesting than that is whose tax rate has gone down the most. And as we look at this chart, we're going to see that the higher the income, the bigger the tax drop was. So we were up here, and we're at, what's that number up there? 71% 71. 71 dropped down to 34, dropped almost 50%. Okay, when we look at the top 1%, it dropped down a slightly uh, different number, but still almost 50%. Yet when we get to the lower income tax brackets, we find a 10 to a 20% decline in taxes over that time. I'm not an advocate for tax increases, but use your own imagination and tell me if you think taxes are going up the higher your income bracket. I'm telling you they're going up, okay? It doesn't matter what happened just in 2013, it's what's going to happen as we continue to go forward. It's going to be sensitive to that, and you need to be sensitive to understanding what happens as taxes increase and the return that we get heads this way, because we're going to go through that tonight. We'll first review end-of-the-year tax changes and their effects. It's not a real estate lesson, but we're going to talk about location, 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 which is where you put your investments. We're going to talk about keeping capital gains in your taxable account, not in your IRA account. You don't put the big growth assets in your IRA account. Although it sounds logical, you would, you don't. Tax-free return of municipals, still very powerful. We're going to show you how to calculate what you would need to earn on a taxable basis. Summarize why careful selection of the investment vehicle is going to be critical going forward. And our illustrious speakers, thank you guys for showing up, are going to show us what we should be doing. I'm going to zip through some of these tax changes. Realize that there's really three different sets of income levels, and we're always talking about taxable income. 450 for marrieds, 400 is one set of rules. Another set of rules, we've got 300 and 250, and then we have 250 and 200. Okay, we're dealing with joint, filing together, or single taxpayers. One, payroll tax jumped up on the first 113,000. We used to have it before 2008. They took it away. The 2% is back. Everyone's taxes have gone up. Number two, top marginal tax bracket. Now we're dealing with the 450 and the 400 income tax bracket has gone from 35 to 39.6%. Three, phase out of personal exemptions. Yeah, I know you think you get $3,900 per exemption, after $300,000, if you make $400, you're losing part of those exemptions. Then we get to the phase out of itemized deductions. Same thing, over $300,000 phases out. But they did us a favor. They told us they're only going to take away a maximum of 80% of our itemized deductions at 3% per 100. So 200,000 over that number, you got 6% down and down and down. And we're phasing out of the exemption. So effectively, the tax rate is going higher and higher by what they've eliminated. So we then look at increase in the rate on dividends and capital gains 
goes from 15 to 20 percent on everything over 450 in the 400 again. Six, death tax increase in estates over 5 million. All of the people that scrambled, and many of our clients included, who scrambled at the end of the year to make sure you got the maximum amount moved to trusts, LLCs, et cetera, they kept the 5 million in, all of that planning, all of that double time on the lawyer's bills we probably didn't need to pay. But they did increase the tax rate from 35 to 40 percent on estates that are over $5 million. Seven, taxes, this isn't necessarily going to affect you, but expiration of full expensing on business capital purchases. So they're giving a disincentive to businesses to invest in the capital that helps run their company because they're decreasing the write-off on that. Obamacare, thank you very much. We have a number of physicians, surgeons, anesthesiologists, just about every medical profession is in the audience. And 3.8% net investment income on cap gains and dividends over 250 and 200. So we're saying for most people, you're going to pay another 3.8% on that. Another payroll tax, almost 1%, but they made it 0.9, make you think it's not that high. 9% hospital insurance, AKA Medicare tax, on 250, 200. Again, this isn't a direct impact to your tax return, but what do you think is going to happen to the price of medical device? Up. Medical cost up, medical cost up, medical cost up. Hmm, maybe we should be investing in medical things. Tax changes, the last three items. Reduce of income tax deductions for individuals' medical expenses. So if in the past you made $100,000, you had $10,000 of medical expenses, you could deduct $2,500. You had to reach over 7.5% of your income level. Now you have to reach over 10%. Of your, medical, of your medical. Elimination of corporate income tax deductions related to Medicare Part D subs, subsidies. Who doesn't seem to affect you, except what do you think is going to happen? Cost of goods and services up. Limitation for corporate tax deduction for compensation of health insurance executives. Nobody cares if the health insurance company's executives that they don't get as much deduction on their tax returns. What do you think is going to happen? Medical insurance is going to go up. It sounds like all seven items tied to medical costs, right? Anyway, there's a lot of them. Let's talk about some strategies, and this will spend a little bit more time. You're able to ask questions at the end. We are going to have a Q&A. So if I go through something and you want more detail, you can wiggle in your chair, and I'll give you a little bit more. You can wait and ask a question later. So redistribute income to lower taxpayers. I have children. Many of you have children. You can redistribute income. How do you do that? You can transfer assets. We're going to talk about that. Or you're in business, you're in the profession, you may be able to pay them rather than paying yourself, which all of a sudden goes to pay education costs that you may be footing the bill for, which now a portion of may become deductible. I'm, I didn't tell you that. Um, family LLCs or limited partnerships. Redistribute the asset to that entity, make the children partial shareholders of that entity, taxed at their rate rather than your rate, but you still maintain control. Gifting. You can gift up to $5.2 million during your lifetime without a gift tax. It's not just the $14,000 per year. However, if you gift in excess per donee in advance or in excess of the 14, then you have to file a gift tax return. So it's helped our CPA friends, all right, that this is a strategy. Accumulate future gifts in a charitable gift annuity. We've talked about this before. We have an article that Dr. Sohn and I published in Medical Economics, and it talks about the use of a charitable gift annuity as one of the vehicles. So I know there's some people in here getting close to retirement, and you may be in the last few years of high income. If you're a gifter, then you might want to make larger gifts now, get the deduction because they're still allowed, and then over time gift them away from the charitable gift annuity. Right? That's just one strategy. Um, Define benefit plans for self-employed. This is only going to apply to a few people, but
but as I look around the audience and I take a look at some of the people that are in independent businesses, it's a great strategy. If you're older, your employees are younger, or you have very, very few employees. <clears throat> Maximize your 401k. Watch our blog next week. We're starting a series on maximizing your 401k and why it makes so much sense. We're actually going to give you a very clear example. We tell every one of our clients, if it's possible, save in your tax deductible savings account first. 401k, 403b, 457, whatever it may be, save there first. And we're going to talk about location. Remember I said location, location, location. I'm going to give you an example, but before I do that, I'd like to, I want you to remember something. I've done this before, but I want you to remember this simple little rule. It's called a rule of 72. You take your return, you divide it into 72. It's going to tell you how long it takes to double your money. Everyone wants to say, how long is it going to take me to have 2 million instead of 1 million? Well, it's going to take you about 14.2 years if you make 5%. If you make 9, it's only going to take you 8 years, which means 16 years from today, you're going to have four times the amount of money you started with. So what are we looking for? We're looking to net the biggest number we can. Here's $100,000 in high-yield bonds. I apologize, Greg, I put 9% up there. Uh, because this is an earlier slide. Can you still get it? Uh, you got to, credits are probably really bad in order to get 9%, but let's use that as a number. So here's $100,000. It's in our taxable account. $9,000 of interest. Interest is taxable at the maximum tax rate. $3,150 ordinary income. The new 3.8% tax, $340. State income tax in New Jersey, 5%, could be higher. 450. Total tax, $3,940. What do I have at the end of the year? I have $5,060 left over. I have $105,060. That's about 5% per year, isn't it? It's going to double in 14 years. Same $100,000 I put in my IRA, my 401k. 9,000, zero tax, zero tax, zero tax. 9,000 I keep. 9,000's reinvested, all of that earns 9% next year, my money doubles in eight years. Location, 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 okay? Now, this is, I apologize for this slide, a little bit difficult. Some of the people in the office saw it and they asked me the question, what does that really mean? If, if you own stock in a company and they make $100 that they would like to distribute to you as a share holder. Okay? $100 of profit, they would like to distribute it. But before they can distribute it, they need to pay 39.6 or $39.60 in tax. Then what comes to you is $60.40, supposedly, except that we have income tax, Medicare individual tax, New Jersey tax, individual division tax, individual divi dividend taxes, deduction phase out, all of the phase outs. So what do we net? 29.61. Hmm. And that's the lowest taxable dividend we can get, right? Okay. So let's move on. And let's make capital gains long term. This is a strategy. It's so one of the things we try to focus on as well. Here is a short-term capital gain, 364 days. Other than a leap year, if I wait two days, it's long-term. I have to wait three, year, three days on a leap year, right? So here's the $8,000 capital gain. There's my tax. Here's my new tax. Here's my total tax, 3,104. I keep 48.96, or I keep 61.2% of what that capital gain was. If I, if I waited three days and made it long term, I keep 76.2% of it. What does that mean? My average return, my net return has gone up. I'm going to double it sooner. It's a good strategy. Okay? 
volatile markets, we don't always have that option. Sometimes we have to take the short-term gain, and then what we can do is harvest losses to offset the gains. Literally say, wait a minute, I don't want to pay short-term capital gain tax. Let's have some short-term losses. Let's take them. And you notice we did that last year, that we took some of those losses, and we said, let's take them, and we bought back the exact same security later on. Within, we actually bought it back the same the next day. We also did it on profits. We took profits for people who had accumulated losses, and we bought the same security because there's no wash sale rule on profits. You can pay the taxes on profits. You can't take the loss if you buy the same security within 30 days. The ETF market allows us to buy the exact same security with a different symbol. So we can buy the SPY. What's the symbol in iShares? What's the symbol in iShares for the uh, uh, for the large cap uh, IVW? So we can buy IVW. We can sell the SPY today and buy IVW. We got the same exact investment, but we took short-term loss or we took a long-term gain and took the benefit of it. So these are some strategies. But remember, I talked about the 401k. This is a really important concept. We're going to show you, not a terribly high income family, but a reasonable income family, husband and wife making $270,000 combined. Okay? So if that was me, I'm making $70,000, my wife is making two hundred. dollars That's what I'm going to do the next time anyway. <laughs> right? So $270,000. We can deduct $35,000 contributed to our 401k plan. If I do that, and I'll answer the, well, I can't give up 17.5 of my 70,000. I'll answer that question in a minute. Okay, but if we did that, my taxable income with the 401k is 215,000. My tax is 47.9. Without the 401k, our combined taxes, our combined taxable income, 252,500. My taxes are 60,200. Who made that investment for me? $23,000 my wife and I made and $12,000 the government made for us, didn't they? Make sense? I think so. Well, I can't give up seventeen five. dollars Do the same thing the government does, redistribute the income. I'm going to ask my wife, I don't have as much spendable income, I can't play golf as much. She gives me a little bit of her income so we both saved the seventeen five. dollars State of New Jersey, I will tell you, it's going to get split right down the middle anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay? Municipal bonds still make sense. How am I doing on time? Not too bad, huh? Too fast? Okay. Anybody have a question on anything? Go ahead. How does the uh, ATM Oh, great question. Are we talking about municipal bonds or are we talking ATM in general? Okay, one is the ATM, that's, the, that's one of the positives of the tax code, which I apologize, I didn't put it in there. The ATM is being ratcheted up, and they're finally fixed. The AMT. I mean the a AMT, the alternative minimum. Did I say ATM too? Okay. The AMT is, is, the a AMT is being ratcheted up. Okay. The ATM works fine in redistributing my wife's income. I can go there and get cash. Um, so they have ratcheted that up. However, alternative minimum tax is always going to be there. We assumed you're paying such a high tax bracket, the alternative minimum tax at 26 or 28 isn't really affecting you. All right? So let's talk about municipal bonds. Again, what I want to do is give you a method to determine what you would need to make if the bond was taxable so you could net the same amount. Remember that municipal bonds, for, the mo for most often, are going to be not taxable at the federal level. They may be taxable at the state level, but they're not going to be taxable at the federal level. So if we want to know what is a tax equivalent yield, we need to take our tax rate away from one and then divide our return on the municipal bond by that factor. So if I'm in the 35% tax bracket, I'm going to divide the yield from a municipal bond by 0.65. 1 minus 0.35 is 0.65. Divide the municipal bond yield by that number. 
and it tells me what I would need to make in order to net the same amount of money in my pocket, which our belief is it's not necessarily the gross number, it's what you keep in your pocket. Because as we look at, and we're going to do that, long-term treasuries and municipal bonds are not that far apart. Right, Andrew? Very close. Risk level, uh, risk, credit risk level may now even be, is about the same, but uh, we find that the interest rate risk is significantly different. Because as we look at this, long-term treasuries in this 3% rate, we have to pay tax on those. We don't pay state tax, but we have to pay federal tax. So now, I would need, with just the income tax, about 5.7, maybe a little bit better, maybe 6% in order to net the same as that 3.5 long-term muni. Is that a fair rate? Okay, pretty close, 3.5. Well, we're going to go downstream from the triple A's, okay? All right. So we go downstream, we got 3.5. We got to make 5.7 to 6% in an alternative investment to net the same that we keep at the end of the day. Everyone understands that. Now, we got long term treasuries, 2 to 3%. Treasuries are taxable, 39%, 3.8%. You net 1.83 on the best credit risk in the nation, which is half of what you might get in a, muni, in a muni. Still work. They still make sense. You may not be getting capital gain from the municipals any longer. It may be a yield play that I'm getting 3.5% net after taxes. That's a yield play. You're not worried about the capital gain portion. So what's the story? The story is the future absolutely is more volatile. Taxes are going to change, and I don't think they're going down. I believe there's only one way for them to go. Inflation is already here. The government tells us that the CPI is not moving up. Hence, there's no inflation. Ben Bernanke told us that this week, didn't he? Anybody know why inflation hasn't gone up? You won't tell it from my bills. I'll tell you, my gas bill, my electric bill, my car expenses are up. Everybody, everyone else is staying flat or going down? Anybody paid buy groceries lately? Everything's up. Why, does they, why do they tell us the CPI isn't moving up? They changed the rules. They changed the formulation for CPI. So what they found is they had stake in the CPI. And all of a sudden, the cost of beef went up, and they took it out. They put hamburger in. So basically they're saying the CPI is, is inflation going up if you're willing to take an alternative to your lifestyle. So what do they do? They're allowing us to say the CPI isn't really increasing, even though we all know the cost of our livings are going up. So inflation is already here. It's not going to get a whole heck of a lot better. And when interest rates start to change, although Bernanke says it's what, 2016, Greg? Is that what he said the other day? Yeah. 2016, before unemployment gets to 6%, hence that's when we are. And I got about two minutes. Asset selection makes a difference. We showed you that. Location makes a difference. Our belief, protect the principal first and then make money. Because we believe that going down and catching the downside is more harmful than protecting the principal and making a little bit less on the upside. So no action is exactly the same as a negative action. Not doing, cash is not a strategy. Being in cash today is the farthest thing from a strategy. You're going backwards because we just admitted inflation is going up. Taxes are going up. The value of our investment is going down. It's never going to double. We can't live that long at one half of 1% if you're lucky. It, we, what's that? One half of 1% in 72 is all I have to do is live to 207 years old and my money will double. At, so no action is the same. So taxes for sure. Inflation, asset selection, principal protection. That's an action plan.
and you need to have a plan in order to get this thing done. So now I've given you some of the strategies. I told you what's happened in the tax code. We're going to answer questions later on. Whatever you have, you have more questions, we'll, we'll take them all. And, but we're going to get some thought leadership on what's happening macroeconomically. Long and short strategies. Historic asset ac allocation needs to change. We proved that in 2008. We got out in July, the major portion of the market. Alternative investment strategies, using both of these. The world economy is affecting us. We watch it, it's in the newspaper, it's in the news, and the market goes down. Fixed income, equities. We're going to talk about both sectors and emerging markets. We have two great speakers. Norman, you're going to introduce Greg.